Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get started. I thought we would do another art totem this week. I, I was debating on whether I wanted to paint one now or wait, but I think I wanna go ahead and paint these. I'm in, the, I'm in the inspiration flow, and since I decided that imperfect stripes would be the, the next you know technique that I wanted to experiment with on these, that it'd be the perfect project just to go ahead and do that. So I'm working on a piece of Hanamule uh, watercolor paper, and it's a nine by 12 pad, so I've just cut this into three inch strips that are 12 inch long to give us our art totem size and we're just going to call these freestyle art totems <laughs> because i'm going to use this kind of pointed one again um, this is the princeton aqua elite brush size 12 you can use any brush you want i'm kind of feeling i'm inspired to use the kiritaki colors so this is the art nouveau set and i like this whole set of colors down here and I did um, a pretty abstract with these kind of uh, pinky purpley shades and that green gold and I'm kind of feeling like that's what I want to use and I'm gonna kind of put the stripes in and let them touch each other and kind of blend and merge and flow and then we can mark make on top of that and see how different that is from the first totem um, idea that we had so I'm just going to just just jump right in and I'm working on like a cotton paper so it does give us a little more time um, to move paint around and to get it to do stuff and so you can see how we can get pretty stripes with this brush I like that much easier than taping them off if you get water on there just um, that's coming off the side of my brush probably uh, but I'm, I'm going to just work it and see where it goes. I'm going to let the colors touch. I'm just playing and not doing it any specific way, really. And just see what we can get. What can we get? And then we'll come back with some mark making on top. And you can make real thin lines and real thick lines. You can let the colors touch. We could come in beside a color and leave some blank white, you know, so the colors don't have to touch. So just get creative here in how you create the stripes. You can leave some white. You see how much fun and really um, freedom that you've got with these you can you can do lots of different stuff it's really cool okay I'm actually a little gaga over green gold sometimes I love it and sometimes I'm like worst color ever <laughs> but hopefully this is a I love it day it's funny how and sometimes I want to love green gold on whatever the project I'm doing and I'll add it to the project and I'll be like oh what was I thinking <laughs> I think I want to love it because of the name I love the called I love green gold the name Isn't that funny sometimes you judge a book by its cover sometimes I judge a color by its name Let's see, I want this kind of purple in here. And you know, you could do this with any kind of paint. It doesn't have to be watercolor. You could do this with acrylic paint. You could do it with any of your paints that you just want to experiment with. You could get real creative in the stuff that you use to make these. It does not have to be anything that I'm showing you. You can just think, oh, what if I did this? And just get it out and try. See, I might look at this and as I'm adding marks on top later, I can go back and decide where did I not get enough contrast? And I can add contrast and other things on the top. So that's something that you can work on if you're thinking don't know if I got enough contrast or whatever. We can, we can add stuff on the top. And 
you know, while you're working, you can mark make with your colors. Don't forget that you can do that. Let those start merging and doing some fun, funky stuff. And because I already told you, I like the green gold. <laughs> Let's start mark making with that. Let's just be crazy. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's do it right in here. If you leave a bunch of like a white stripe, this is the perfect time to fill in that stripe. Oh yeah, super fun. Super fun. And to kind of tie them together, you might do one of each mark on each one, or you could not. You could just do your own thing on each one. So just, you can kind of pick and decide as you're going what, what's really the right marks and moves for you. Ooh, I like that dark purple. That was a good one. And you know what else we can do? We could come back in um, and lay some water in here and let that start blooming out. I do like some water blooms. I like that purple as a stripe. Let me put one over here. Alright, so if you don't have enough texture in some of these, you could come back in now and we could we could add some water and let that start adding its own little texture and blooming out for us. And it's kind of good if you do some of that when it's damp, but if you do it when it's dry, you'll get a very set mark. If you do it when it's damp, it'll bloom out into all the colors, which I like it when it does both. So we're going to get a variety of both. You got you to kind of think of all these things at the same time. <laughs> It's almost too much to think about. Like, oh no, I forgot to do blah, blah, blah. And then you have to go back. And maybe the stuff is dry. Look at all that yumminess that we got going on here. All right, let's let this dry. This has got some goodness today. Feeling pretty good about my freestyle and art totems. <laughs> let me let these dry and I'll be right back. All right, these have dried. Look at how, or it's mostly dry. I think I see a little tiny bit right there, but look how amazing these are looking. And I'm almost feeling like I wanna move it this way so I can kinda see. And I'm gonna use some of these Archer and Olive Acrylograph pens. You can use the Posca pens for stuff like this too. But I like the colors and I haven't really played in these after I ordered the couple sets that I got. And so I think I'm gonna play with these today. And what I really love about these is you've got some natural separations and transgressions of colors that you can now use to doodle in and you've got some good stopping and starting places. For instance, if I was gonna put something up here, like say dots, I could easily follow the line and put that just in the area where it's kind of a natural separation in there. And so I like having some of those dividers and separations like that for me to do fun stuff in. I can do dots, I can do lines, I can do any of my favorite marks if I get stuck. I can pull out my favorite mark making paper that I created that I just kind of have hanging on my wall over here that I can look up at and make some decisions on what's my favorite marks, what do I want to use. You can screenshot that if you want to <laughs> use some of my mark making ideas. Um, but I really love having um, this piece up on my wall so when I get stuck, I can just kind of look over at it and think, ooh, this would be a good whatever. And so just taking some ideas off of this, I really like the lines with the pearls. That could be a good choice. I like dots. Um, you could do vines. You could do little Vs. Maybe I'll just hang that right here so it's right in front of me. We could do little flowers. See so many ideas. We could do um, vertical lines. You can do it all in black. You could do it all in white. You could pick a color um, and do some different colors. See how many good things we got going on now that I thought of those lines with the pearls. This is the black um, acrylic paint marker and we could use the very fine tip black Posca 
for the same thing. So I'm going to, and I might keep it within a stripe here. Ooh, I'm kind of liking this one here. So I'm just going to do fine lines within a color stripe. And then I can come back and add some little pearls. This is actually a bigger line than I was in my mind thinking, so I might have even been happier using my dip pen in black ink. So good, good to know for the next time. I like the size of the line and at the same time, sometimes I want an even finer line and so the finer line is gonna be the dip pen. Now we know. This is exactly why I do that, this kind of stuff um, on projects like this. This is how we figure out these yummy fun things that we wanna do with our art. Otherwise, you know, you never tested it out. So you get to the important pieces and then you're like, uh oh, that was a wrong choice because you'd never experimented before. I'm all about experimenting. Really, if you ask what my art style was, we're just going to call it experimenting. <laughs> That's all I want to do. I want to experiment with all the art supplies on the planet. <laughs> I want them all. I want all the colors. I want all the different types and I just want to play which let me tell you I have for years now collected art supplies because that's actually its own hobby collecting and using <laughs> and finally I have figured out how to turn my collecting of supplies into a job <laughs> <laughs> that's why you guys get to see so many fun things because I like to collect stuff art supplies and then I want to show you and I want to play with and just experiment okay so this is so close to the color that we used that's hardly showing up but it's showing up enough that it's giving me texture within that color and sometimes that texture Ooh, ooh, see, sometimes that texture is what I'm looking for. Like, look at that. So it was real fine, but you can see it. It's very light, but it's there. Um, that texture is sometimes the goal. Let's see. But maybe over here. Ooh, I really like this whole section right here. Look how pretty that is. That is so beautiful. Like, if I were going to cut this up, that's the part I'd want to keep. Oh yeah, I like it. And if you want something more dramatic than really soft colors on really soft colors, do this with black or white and you'll definitely have more drama and fun going on. Um, but I like, I like what we got going on. Let's see, we could do some little flowers. That might be fun. That's the wrong color green. But now that we got it in there, let's just go with it. So that's kind of fun right there in the middle. It's not going to be too distracting because it's in the middle of a whole lot of stuff. So you, if you do a mark you don't love, love, don't fret. It's in the stripe. It's only you're the only one that's going to notice it. You don't have to do it again if you don't love it. You could then experiment with some other fun lines or color or stripe further on. And use those paint the way the paint meshed and merged as your guide. To where to separate that off. That's what I like doing about pieces of art like this. It's not any hard and fast rules. It's kind of like what inspired you in the moment. And when you peel the whole piece, the whole piece works as a cohesive unit, even if you didn't love one particular bit in there. Okay, let's try this pretty burgundy. 
And if you use the color on one of these, I would encourage you to go ahead and use the color on the other two just so that they really kind of blend as a whole cohesive little trio. But you could do, you know, a different totem for each stripe if you weren't doing a little trio. So you could have three different paint colors on all your little stripey pieces and just totally experiment there with what you're going to be making. You could have three different colorways and then just really gone wild. Stripes gone wild. <laughs> Sounds like a show. <laughs> Alright, that's some prettiness going on here. We could do some gold. I'm always using my other dip pen, but I want you to see, you know, you can use this one just as good. And when you dip it in, they say, you know, it goes a lot further if you dip it in past the hole. So that's kind of what I've done there. And I'm just going to come in and add some yummy, fun gold lines. Look at that. That's exactly what I should have done with the black. The line is so fine that really, are you going to see it? You will when the light shines on it. Love it. So I might just go ahead and put that all the way through some of these. Because when the light shines, we are definitely going to see that little bit of shimmer in there. Oh yeah, see it's very subtle and faint, but I can see it and it's enough to make me happy, which is the goal when you're creating. What's going to make you happy with the pieces? Just something really faint and pretty that's going to shimmer. I like it. I like it. <laughs> You could have done graphite lines. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do. Pull every supply you've got. And just start experimenting with all these fun techniques. Like what could I put here? What could I put there? You always see me pull out my favorite stuff. But my favorite stuff doesn't have to be your favorite stuff. It is fun to experiment with all the stuff. And then you know what your favorite stuff is. That's how you get into what is your style and... What is it that you love? That's how you figure these things out. All right, I'm loving the subtle gold that we got all the way through there. Like for reals. Now I'm kind of like, do I have enough? Is it decorated enough? I'm kind of feeling pretty good about this. Okay, so I actually feel like right here we're missing something. Let's just do a little look before we tie this up. So. We could come back with some black dot contrast. Do I want to do that? I don't want it to be too overbearing with black. I want it to be subtle. Let's just do some dots and I'll add some dots in further along because that was really strong with the lines I did. And this might give me that little bit of balance. So you just got to look at the pieces and say, is it balanced? Have I gone too heavy in one place or another? Do I need to pull back and lighten up and add white on top or separate it with some marks? You know, what is it that we can do to bring it back down or pump it up? If we're feeling like, oh, I didn't do anything here. I don't have enough what is left that it needs. What I like about these pens, they're like the Posca's, they're acrylic paint. So I like that. They're not ink, they're paint. All right, so let's evaluate one last time. Do I feel like I've got to see now? I feel like 
right here even though I did that gold in there I feel like it needs a tiny bit more so what do we have in our ooh, ooh, mungos this is mungos is that the right one is that the right no let's see what about this one this these um size 72 piece set of these mungos Mung mungos <laughs> um and I like them because they're vivid and they're an extra three-dimensional texture on stuff, which I'm obsessed with this year. Ooh, look at that. Okay. All right, now I'm feeling better about it. Keep on adding some stuff until you're like, okay, I'm there. And then we can add some stuff after you peel your tape too because you always might see something after you pull your tape. Pulling the tape finishes it off for me. It gives it an edge. Pulling tape's kind of magical. Makes everything look done. I mean, that's my favorite part. This is why I like to tape stuff down. Look how pretty this one is. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh man, these are so much prettier in the colors than the last one I did. Oh, look how pretty these are. These are just so lovely. These are like gigantic bookmarks. <laughs> Whoa, look at these. These are so lovely. I hope you have fun painting with me today, creating some freestyle art totems. These come out so lovely delightful the colors are just right up my alley i love this color palette and that's in those art nouveau sets hope you had fun painting with me today and if you want to share what you're working on you can tag me at two little owls art and you can join the facebook group i have for art peeps i link everything below the video including the supplies that we were using today and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.